One of the many reasons that we love the TNT broadcast with Shaquille O'Neal, Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, though he was not taking part in this conversation, I'm not sure where he was, and Charles Barkley, is that they are so incredibly honest with the viewer. And it's something that we truly envy. And they open up discussions that many other mediums simply will not go. So we, we certainly share uh, TNT, the NBA on TNT's pre and halftime and post game shows. Uh, we share their thoughts and, and, and their uh, um, and the subjects that they cover. So they were talking about Matt Barnes, who put up uh, this tweet right here. <laughs> it was, <laughs> hold off Such your laughter. Here's what he said. Uh, Love my teammates like family, but I'm done standing up for these N words. Oh, really? Now, I read this with that blocked out. I didn't realize that he used the sort of oh, so, familiar so take version. Take back of the your word. laughter. Yeah. All this shit does is cost me money, and then he went on to apologize and he what have you. But, well, he didn't just apologize and what have you. He gave a tanned apology. You think so? Oh, he knocked the apology out of the park. Really? He, oh, he, he was like good apology. Oh, it was a great apology. He was like, really? it's my bad. I overreacted. I was emotional. I love my teammates. I apologize to everyone. Okay, I that's not how I read And it. he was like, and I shouldn't have hit the guy. I shouldn't have gone after Serge Ibaka. I was totally wrong in every way, and I'm embarrassed today. So, so sorry. Well, you know, if he was Steven Jackson, you know what he would have said. What? He's going in his mouth. Steven Jackson of the, oh, that's Steven Jackson. I was like Steven Jackson of the Falcons. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> Steven right, Jackson. Right. The Steven Jackson, the NBA player. Yeah, Steven he's going to go into Bacchus mouth. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. If only um, Matt Barnes was like that. So, okay, let, let's, let's not focus on that. Uh, let's move right along. So then the, uh, uh, Charles Barkley opens up the discussion about using the N-word. Mm -hmm. And here is what he said. So let's pull up those quotes very quickly. He says, I'm a black man. I use the N-word. I'm going to continue to use the N-word with my black friends, with my white friends. They are my friends. In a locker room, and when I'm with my friend, we use racial slurs. And then Ernie says, so this was appropriate to tweet that out? He goes, no, hell no, hell no. And he says, you know, the incognito thing and the Paula Dean thing. And he, he basically says, this is different. So let's, let's, let's continue right along while the quotes are up. What, let's go to the next one. What I do with my black friends is not up to white America to dictate to me. Amen. What we say in the locker room, it should always stay in the locker room. The language we use, sometimes it's homophobic, sometimes it's sexist. A lot of times, it's racist. We do that when we're joking with our teammates. It's nothing personal. And then the last one, this national debate makes me uncomfortable. White America don't get to dictate how me and Shaq talk to each other. They've been trying to, what they say, you guys use it. It's in rap music. No, 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 no. It's not the same as I tell my white friends who I love like brothers. They ask, when is it appropriate to use? If you use it around the wrong brother, the next thing you hear is a clock upside your damn head. So he compared it to the incognito thing. Why is it a clock upside your head? Like who, who, who would think, who takes a clock and hits somebody in the side of the head? Must be I, gotta, I would have to find the clock first. It must be an old school thing. I think it, it's definitely an old school thing. Yeah. So. What's that? Right, get your clock cleaned, right? Get your clock cleaned. Right. So. Oh, I'm mad at you. Hang on a sec. I got a clock in the back bedroom. I'm gonna go get it. I got a clock right here. Then I'm gonna hit you with it. So, um, he compared it to the incognito thing, as he states it, Paula Dean. And then there was also this week where Rob Gronkowski, at an event in Foxborough, an Asian man who was donning a Rob Gronkowski jersey goes up on stage. Gronkowski's working the mic. He's working the room. He's being funny. He's being Gronk as he is. He goes up there, the Asian man, he starts dancing, and then he poses for a picture, and then Gronkowski's like, oh, I thought he only made fried rice. And then no one left, but like the joke was on him. But I mean, the point that I'm making is, are we just getting a little too sensitive as a society? And I mean, uh, follow up on what Barkley said. What, the, what we need to do is distinguish between what matters and what doesn't matter. What Richie Incognito did, it would appear, uh, what, he, what we know of what he did, that matters. You can't Verbal do that. Verbal assault. Um, you know, and, and then the other issues with incognito, with the, you know, investigation into the, uh, the sexual assault, they're not really calling it, they're calling it sort of aggressive sexual harassment, sexual molestation, you know, I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but at the golf club, at the, at the, uh, at the golf tournament. Mm -hmm. um, like, some of these are serious issues. I mean, I, I, I get it, that clearly, it, it seems very obvious that Richie Incognito felt comfortable using that word with Jonathan Martin, suggesting that he had used the word before with Jonathan Martin. And based on what Barkley says, it would appear that Barkley has been called that by white friends, but they're his friends. Incognito obviously thought he was a friend of Jonathan Martin. I don't know what Incognito thought. I think Incognito is a giant fraud and a bully who has been outed. Um, that's my sense of where this is gonna head. 
but Incognito did get backed up by a number of black players on the Dolphins. Uh, f former teammates, Ricky saying Williams. Saying he was honorary black. Is what yeah, one teammate said he was an honorary black guy, but Mike Williams stuck up for him. Brent Grimes stuck up for him. Ricky Williams Mike stuck up for him. Brent, Brent Grimes struck up for him, Mike Wallace stuck up for him, and, uh, and Ricky Williams stuck up for him. Um, and then some other black guys around the league have stuck up for him. And then plenty of black guys around the league haven't. Um, so, you know, obviously, Richie Incognito didn't quite get it. Uh, what Barkley says is totally true, and I don't know why it's white so America dictating. Yeah, of course not. Look, you don't get to you don't get to have a you don't get to enslave a people and then uh, and then minimize their existence with Jim Crow laws for another hundred years after slavery, and continue to sort of exhibit the institutional racism that we do in this country. It's getting much better, but you don't get to do that and then decide how they get to handle the words that you use to subjugate them. If, well, I, if it were up to me, if I got to dictate everybody's language, I would wish that no one would use that word. Agreed. But it's not up to me at all, and I don't care if black guys use it. It's right. not a big deal. If they want to use it, boom, more power to you. The world is filled with ignorant people who can't tell stealing a newspaper from 7-Eleven from shooting the 7-Eleven clerk in the head because they're both crimes, it's the same thing. So the problem that, that guys like Charles Barkley are gonna encounter as a result of this is that he's got his white friends who can use it and he can say racial slurs around them and I got no beef with that at all. Some people can't figure out the difference and they'll think, well then I get to dress up like Trayvon Martin at Halloween, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and so that's what we're going to have to live with is the inability to distinguish.